Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with some more math today. Here's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be going over an implicit differentiation problem, specifically this one right here. What we're going to do is find dy dx using implicit differentiation, given that y times cosine x equals x squared plus y squared. So let's get into it. First thing you want to do when you see any question like this is look at what it's asking you to find, which in this case is dy dx. This is important because it indicates a couple things to us. You want to look at what letter is on the top and the bottom of this indicator here. So it's telling us to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So that tells us that y is a function, y is a function of x, and x is an independent variable, or the input of our function y. So y is our output, x is our input. And this is important because it's going to tell us how to treat x and how to treat y when we apply implicit differentiation. So first of all, since we have a dx here on the bottom of this, what we're going to want to do is take this function or this equation, which has x's and y's in it, and we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So we're going to take d dx of both sides. Okay, so we're doing d dx because the dx is on the bottom here. If this was flipped, we'd be treating this problem very differently. But this is what we have. So to take the derivative of the left side of our equation here with respect to x, notice we have two things being multiplied together here, which tells us we're going to need to use the product rule. So product rule says take the derivative of the first function and multiply it by the second, and then add the first function times the derivative of the second. So first we'll go ahead and take the derivative of y. So the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Because we don't have an explicit formula for y in terms of x, we aren't going to be able to find an explicit formula for the derivative of y. We don't really know what y is. So since we don't know anything about y other than the fact that it's a function of x, when it tells us to find the derivative of y with respect to x, really the best we can do is just to say dy dx because this, this notation here means the derivative of y with respect to x. That's kind of you know what that represents in words. So that's what we have for the derivative of y. And then we multiply this by the second function left alone, which is just cosine of x. And then we add the first function times the derivative of the second function. Since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of cosine x with respect to x is just going to be negative sine x. Okay, so this is our full derivative of the left side of our equation using the product rule. Now on the right side, we're going to have, first of all, the derivative of x squared with respect to x. That's pretty straightforward. Since x is our variable, we can just use power rule here. So bring the 2 down in front, lower the 2 down to a 1, x to the first is just x. So that's just going to be 2x. And then the derivative of y squared with respect to x is going to be a little bit more complicated. The reason is we aren't taking the derivative of this with respect to the thing that, that it has in it, right? We're taking the derivative of something with a y in it with respect to x. So as a result, this is going to require us to use the chain rule because what you want to think about here is it's almost like we have an inner function and an outer function, right? So let's say that y is our inner function. y is some function of x which we don't know, so we can't just easily replace that with something else and take its derivative with respect to x. It's going to be a, you know, that added step of having this being some unknown inside function, and then this squared piece up here is kind of like our outside function. So chain rule says we're going to take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. So the outside is just this squared piece here. So we bring the 2 down in front, leave the inside alone, which is our y, and then lower the power by 1, 
2 minus 1 is 1, y to the first is just y. And then, by chain rule, we need to multiply that by the derivative of our inside function. Our inside function is y, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Okay, so it's kind of like product rule, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, not product rule. It's kind of like power rule. You have that component of bringing the 2 down in front, lowering the power by 1. But then, due to the chain rule, we need to also multiply this by the derivative of y. Okay, so similar process as usual. We want to get all of our dy dx terms on one side, all of our non dy dx terms to the other side. So, for dy dx terms, we have this one here and this one here. So we'll have both of those on the left side of our equation. And then this is a non dy dx term here. So we want to move this over to the other side. And that's a non dy dx term. We'll leave it over there. So first, on this side of our equation, our dy dx times cosine x is just going to stay over here. And then this term we want to move over to the other side. We could, instead of thinking of this as plus y times negative sine x, we can move this negative over here in front, and that'd be the same as minus y times sine x. So to move that over, we can add y times sine x, and that'll cancel. But we want to obviously add it over to this side of the equation also. Okay, so we've moved that over there. What we also need to do is bring this piece over here to this side. So if we have plus 2y dy dx, we would need to subtract 2y dy dx to cancel it from over here and subtract it over on this side, minus 2y dy dx. And then we're going to have this piece that was over here before, 2x, and then this plus y sine x that we just added over. Okay, so let's just move this kind of up to the top to kind of get organized here. All right, so now notice all of our dy dx terms are over on the left side of our equation, and the right side of our equation doesn't have any dy dx terms in it. So since everything on the left side of our equation has dy dx in it, we can factor that out of this left side of our equation. So if we pull out a dy dx, this term here, what would we be left with? If we pulled out the dy dx, we would just be left with this cosine x piece. And then this term here, if we pulled out our dy dx, we would just be left with negative 2y. Okay. And then everything over here is still going to be the same. Now we have dy dx multiplied by all this stuff here. If we, if we have something that we want to solve for being multiplied by a bunch of other stuff and we want to move that other stuff over to the other side, all we have to do is divide both sides by that thing. So we'll divide both sides by cosine x minus 2y. Divide the other side by it also because whatever you do to one side of your equation, you have to do to both sides. So then we'll just be left, so this will cancel with this, and we'll just be left with dy dx equals 2x plus y sine x all over cosine x minus 2y. So one thing I want to kind of point out is notice that we have, for the derivative of y with respect to x, we have this kind of messy function here or formula which has x's and y's in it and the reason why we can only express the derivative of y with respect to x or dy dx in terms of x and y instead of just x or just y is because the the equation that we started out with had the x's and y's all kind of jumbled up together and there wasn't a way to solve for just one in terms of the other so in other words we didn't have an explicit function for y in terms of x. Since we didn't have an explicit formula, only kind of the implicit function that we were given, the best we could do is to get 
for the derivative something with both x's and y's in it. And that's why it's called implicit differentiation is because it's used when you don't have an explicit formula for the thing that you're trying to find the derivative of. You just have an implicit version of it, which basically just means the x's and y's can't be separated and they're kind of all stuck together. Or in other words, your input and your output are all stuck together. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If there's any questions that you have after watching this that I didn't answer in the video, please drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to help answer any questions for you that I wasn't able to answer in the video. Um, and hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, I'd love it if you could give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with um, lots of other implicit differentiation videos in the next uh, you know, couple of weeks. Um, so subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when a new video gets posted um, and we'll help you uh, kind of really gain a good understanding of how to solve these implicit differentiation problems. Um, see you back next time. Thanks for watching.